Um, there was a uh, there was a, a beautiful soul that shared uh, a nice image that said, uh, "Love will find a way." Okay, and I and in the healing community, that that is absolutely profound because it's the truth. Uh, when you know that you are what love is at a small, small age, an exceptionally excited kid like I did, and now you're going to venture out into the universe to go experience everything that's possible to experience because you're doing it with, you're on fire, right? And so when I was around um, 15, I got introduced to a lot of psychedelics, uh, got into um, drug dealing with laboratories, CIA stuff, military all the stuff coming out of Vietnam, Afghanistan, all that kind of stuff, all the cartels. And, and in the process, um, I ended up um, getting busted, got set up, okay, through narcotics detectives, right? See, they play both sides of the road. Um, and, so, and so to try and shorten this up, because I ran out of memory trying to put it into a much larger context, because there's so much other interconnecting information when you're on a spiritual battlefield, how all this is playing out. Because I wrote my own timeline. Okay. So you're not going to understand how that works while I was experiencing this stuff the way that I was, unless you know that you're running a hyperdrive, which is a polarity integrator, while you go and experience the things you do by the connection that you have with others, which is all the gene codes, which are all the field codes, which are all the goo codes. Okay. That's a, I've gone into that. But nevertheless, um, I, I ended up using drugs the wrong way. Okay. And I ended up getting busted. Um, and, um, so I was in order to, uh, remedy that I was in their court system, which means, you know, no mercy. Okay. You're in their hands, pirates. Okay. And so I, I was told that, um, I had six months in other words, they suspended my sentence for two years to go to a state prison, actually, okay? Because I had a record of distributing dangerous drugs, which were psychedelics, marijuana, stuff like that. They were coming down hard. This was back during the day when Nixon was president. They were coming down hard, you know, with uh, what was known as Operation Intercept. That's when they began training dogs, with, you know, with customs and all the whole rest of that, even though they're the same people that are generating all these drugs. Anyway, so they get you both ends to burn your candle out, burn your wick out, burn your bulb out, put your fire out, okay? So I was experiencing putting my own fire out. Um, and so this is directly tied to trauma held in cellular memory. Because you already know, I knew at four years of age, I was on a spiritual battlefield. So I went down this pathway with the drugs and the labs and all this kind of stuff. And I ended up getting in trouble in the same court system associated with the same people that are generating all this stuff. So I ended up when I was in jail with another guy who said, listen, I'm, I'm in here for the same thing, but for sort of different reasons, but it's all about drugs. So the court said that, listen, if I go to a drug rehab program, those charges will be deferred, which means if I successfully complete a drug rehab program, they'll take that off my record. I was given the same deal. Okay. And so that meant that I had to come back to the court to prove that I'd gone through a drug rehab program. The first drug rehab program I went to was a state mental hospital in Norwalk, California, known as Synanon. Okay. Now, when I first got there, they detox you. Okay. And then you go into basically a family unit that's part of the state mental hospital. Right. Now you're under basically, it, it's, it, it's like being in a, in a hospital jail, but you're doing this voluntarily. So you can check yourself out. You're not there based on the court. All the court said is come back in six months. Give a certificate that shows you completed the program. So I went into this program. The method of this program is to, is to, is to essentially generate even more trauma. So the first thing that I realized that is if they had all these rules, now you're getting into AI rule-based functions, which is to obey your master programming. And so the way that they, their, their method was, is to tear you down, to completely tear you down and, 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 and sort of attack you, but in very subtle, devious, tempestuous ways that are like little pins in a voodoo doll. Okay. By the people that are with you, 
Okay. This gets into a lot of Charles Manson stuff. I can do a little short course on that if you'd like sometime. Because I was with those folks too, like Jim Morris and those people, and up on Mulholland Drive and the U.S. Air Force Wonderland, all that. Um, but what happened was I was I was down. Okay, spiritually my energy was down. Okay, so I realized what they were doing to people. If you violated any rule, they put a toilet a toilet seat over your head, and made you wear a pair of diapers for a day or a week, depending on the level of violation. If you left a cigarette butt, for example, someplace, you could get the, you could get the toilet seat over your head. Because what it's saying is we're going to make you back to being a baby again. And we're going to reprogram you. That's what it is. Using trauma to do it. Where people actually believe that I need to do this problem. I need to experience more trauma to hold in cellular memory by the way that they're treating me. Believing that I'm going to be rehabbed. Right. All that does is reinforce the same trauma-based mind control behavior to keep doing drugs that they keep making money on. This becomes a two-way street. They get you both ways. So when I was in there, just as Kunjoy said, love will find a way. I knew when I realized what their method would do, I realized I'm not going to heal in here. There's no way you're going to heal in a place like this. I'm going to go someplace where there's love. I need to be in an environment where I'm experiencing more love. So I went to another place, which was out in Chino, California. And there I found people with people who were nice. They were peaceful. They were kind. They were generous. I began to heal. As my spirit began to heal, I was no longer being held captive. What I was held captive to before, it was causing me to do the things that I was doing to myself. Okay. Now my spirit's back up. That's what love does. Love raises your spirit, raises your energy. Now you're healing. Love is what heals us. Love will always find a way. And we know that because we know the pathway that we chose. That's the pathway that we're on. We are what love is. That's the pathway we took. So we get back on our horse. That's called <laughs> recovering your energy or recovering your spirit. Your spirit is guiding you. The spirit that is in that light will see to it that you get to the where you need to be. That's a spirit guide that is within you. That's how it works. I know that because that's how I experienced being me in spiritual form with a soul. Do, 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 do.